Rangarajan, veteran Communist Party of India Marxist leader and an MP. He would be rendering his speech on the topic Agricultural Economy. Please, sir. Thank you very much. At the outset, I express my gratitude to the organizers of this uh, program. We parliament members, we are accustomed to ask for more time. That's what my previous speaker also did. Finally, finally, we'll put 10 finalists. <laughs> and before that, we will have, try to have some friendship with the speaker or the chairman of the house. That's our habit and they will also permit that, uh, that that democracy is very strong. Sir, our agriculture today faces many problems which I am going to elaborate what I, we feel. Agriculture engage around 50% of the workforce and about 30% of the population depend on agriculture work for their livelihood. Where as such work force is engaged. The National Crime Records Bureau states over 3 lakh farmers have committed suicide in the last two decades. It means every two farmers giving up their life every two hours. The deaths are due to death burden which clearly shows the crisis in agriculture in our country. For example, the outstanding dues to sugarcane cultivators is rupees 20,000 crores. This is May 2016 figure. May 2016, the Indian sugarcane cultivators, the due from the factory is 21,000 crores. This figure is from Indian Sugar Mill Owners Association. This makes the farmers really rely on money lender. It causes suicide. The situation continues, continues even today, even after many debate in parliament, both houses. Both houses, even the previous regime and the present regime, there are discussion, call attention motion, but no improvement in that area. Productivity level. Sir, productivity level for most crops are below the world average. The annual rate of growth of production of crystals 2.56% in 1967-81 is 1.45% in 1991-2010. It has been reduced. And pulses on food grain is also the yield per hectare is decayed marginally by 80 kg per hectare. The, this causes the low level of productivity is due to the absence of scientific farming method, irrigation facilities, etc. The government has not paid attention to this aspect adequately for the past 60 years. I don't blame this government or that government. Sir, import started as soon as new liberalization started coming out. Under the new liberalization policy, the removal of quantitative restriction on agriculture imports under WTO regime and very low level of import duties on those on these imports exposed our farmers' volatile world market prices. Withdrawal of subsidies on agriculture inputs has led to rise the input cost. For example, in June 2012, fertilizer companies drastically raised the price on all non-urea fertilizer, citing the rupee devalue and cut subsidies by the government under the nutrient-based subsidy scheme. The MRP and D-aluminium phosphate, which is widely used by the fertilizer after urea gone up, from 9,650 rupees per ton 
2010 it rose to 24000 just imagine price of mob fertilizer rose from 4445 per ton to 17000 rupees almost 300% to 400% the this renders the agriculture un remunerative deregulation the seed sector allowing entry of multinational agro business and manusato and cartel etc spoiled our agriculture this is our opinion inadequate minimum support price the minimum support price fixed by the government is neither fair nor remunerative for example the msp for sugar cane fixed by the central government is 127 per quintal whereas the states give 200 per quintal so also msp fixed for paddy etc the msp has no relation with the cost of production so if we compare last year to this year in tamil nadu the paddy price has come down and paddy per acre yield is also come down how do you expect the cultivator to live another example i can give from, from tamil nadu itself this banana all bananas has been dropped their price especially this nendran that is the highest variety which we export to kerala and other places last year it was kilo 35 rupees this year it is kilo 10 rupees so the minimum support price fixed by the government is not helpful the center total center total outlay for the agriculture sector declined from 10.4% from 31 rupees 31322 in 2014-15 if you see the 2014-15 budget it was 31322 crore and this budget it is 28050 crores 2015-16 the budget increased the target for rural credit substantially but lowered the center share under the irrigation etc by nearly 5500 crore public investment in agriculture is in real terms as witness the steadily decline and share of agriculture and allied sector in total plan expenditure is also negligible the investment irrational infrastructure has also declined financial liberalization reversed the policy of the social development banking it has reduced the access of the peasantry to the institutional credit but farmers are the mercy of the money lender the government has not come with any steps to implement the recommendation of the swaminathan committee to provide loans to the peasantry and more than 4 4% interest rate the microfinance institution exploit the desperate situation of the farmers lending at a very high rate of interest this makes the farmer to live in a perennial indebtedness speculative purchase food grains has caused enormous damage to the agriculture there were distress selling of products by farmers further the future trading prevents the farmer getting benefit if the time of harvest the prices produced are high the rural countryside has witnessed continued demolition of land lot section in most part of india land is concentrated a few hands with the monopoly control see now you can see more people coming to the city leaving their land or selling their land not only in chennai you can go to calcutta you can go to bombay you can go to delhi anywhere this calculated reverse of land reforms and dilution of land ceiling laws the agrarian crisis is forcing the peasantry particularly poor section to sell their land and livestock the landless peasants 
which was 22% in 1990, has increased to 41% as per the National Sample Survey. Large-scale acquisition of conversion agriculture land for a special economic zone, mining industries, urbanization is taking place without proper compensation, rehabilitation and resettlement. Tenancy problem is another very important problem. A large part of the cultivable area in India is being cultivated by tenants. In West Bengal, efforts were reverse the gains by Operation Baraga by the landlords gaining momentum. In Bihar, the recommendation of the Bandobadhyaya committee to protect the tenants are not implemented. In fact, even today, Bandobadhyaya is a Rajya Sabha member of Trinamul Congress from Bengal. In Andhra Pradesh, he was an IAS officer, he was the senior most IAS officer amongst the MPs. In Andhra Pradesh, the state government was forced to pass an ordinance to recognize the tenant farmers with the identity cards, thus the tenant farmers faced difficulties. Tenant farmers continued to be deprived of cheap credit, subsidies, crop insurance, etc. Alternative policies are required. The crisis in agriculture cannot be solved by cosmetic changes. It requires alternative policies, some of them we feel, carry out land reform. Without land reform, you cannot solve the rural unemployment problem. We cannot provide employment for everybody in any industry. And now the small and the medium industry, they are killing. Even Agarbati, you are not producing. If you want good Agarbati, you have to go to ITC. Agarbati, you will be surprised. It is imported from Vietnam and Cambodia. This is the situation today. Just imagine. Increase public expenditure on agriculture. Ensure remunerative prices, make available cheap credit and debt relief measures. Sir, agriculture, the interest rate you know. Just now one friend approached me. For education loans, they put interest. If they don't pay, they put... In, uh, perishable interest, I mean extra interest. So what is happening in this country? For a small scale industry, 17% interest. Suppose if you purchase a RD car or BMW, 50,000 to 1 crore, you are charged only 4%. If I say this government is a pro-monopoly, pro-multinational, people accuse us. Make available cheap credit and debt relief measures. Control input prices. Enhance research in agriculture, etc. When I say this, I would like to submit to this August body. All these things temporarily happen in reform. See, we are not against reform. Reform must help the common man to live. People immediately quote about China. See, what is happening in China? See United Nations reports. The 30 years of reform in China helped the common man. It doesn't create destitutes in the country. And we must remember that China reform not started in 1978, it started in 1948. When they are going for a long march, they started giving, yes, they started giving lands to the landless people. They gave, they gave education to the people. 30 years of Chinese work with the village people, agriculture, when they entered in reform, 
when they open their country for a multinational and foreign investment china is able to grow india is not able to grow so with this my submission people enlightened people like you in this august house should think this policy on agriculture will not help our country thank you very much thank you for your wonderful speech sir i request narayan to give you a memento Thank you, sir.